Hello everybody. Um, I wanted to take a moment to make this video so that I could show you uh, something really cool. Um, and that, that has to do with Redux. Now, uh, a lot of people have used Redux and they may hate it. They may think it's great. What's interesting to me is that Redux, especially over the past couple of years, has changed significantly. And when we talk about Redux, a lot of people are thinking, oh, Redux is all these reducers and switch statements and everything that has to do with boilerplate and everything. Now, I, I, I do like Redux, and sometimes boilerplate can be a good thing. It helps keep uh, everything on the screen um, at your fingertips. But quite frankly, if you're still thinking of Redux as a bunch of action types and switch statements going through reducers, a lot's changed, and that may affect your decision making when you're deciding whether or not to use Redux or to try something new. So I wanted to go over Redux.js Toolkit, which is an opinionated set of tools that are used with Redux um, that will change greatly how you use Redux in your applications. In order to do that, I've actually taken my old code challenge from when I first applied to Publicis Sapient. Uh, back in 2018, beginning of 2018. So this is about two years old. Um, and it's a very simple carousel application. Oh, there we go. So you search for puppy. And there you go. And it shows you a bunch of carousels. And you go forward. And you can add more. And so on and so forth. Um, so that carousel uh, application uses Redux. I'll just take you quickly through the store. Um, the store here is pretty standard. You've got your apply middleware, combined reducers. This is the old way of doing the um, doing the reducer. And we're gonna convert this to use Redux Toolkit. In your old days, you had your initial state, and then uh, what you would do is you'd have these reducer functions. And each reducer function would correspond essentially to a property in the store. So your property of photos uh, that has a reducer and then when you load the photos, you return the action payload. And then we have a photo cache, which is so that we can grab photos uh, and then store them locally so that we don't have to go back to the API and load them more than once. Um, and we also have a loading screen, which is just a Boolean that lets you know whether or not the item is loading. So uh, when you dispatch loading, we know that to show the loading in it, when you dispatch load photos, that means the photos have indeed arrived. For the carousel itself, um, all that is is just determining which number we're on, which is when we have a new set of photos, we immediately reset it to zero. And when we have uh, a new page, uh, if the payload's undefined, we... Uh, or is not undefined, we return action payload, otherwise we return the state, and the default is to return the state. So these are our two reducers for this very simple application. Um, you'll also notice that I've got this action types dot photos dot load photos. What I've done is I've actually created this function which kind of namespaces everything. So um, essentially load photos is on photos. So this way if I wanted to have, for example, uh, carousel dot uh, hydrate or carousel dot load photos the namespace wouldn't collide now that's that's the old way of doing it and that's was good and it seemed to work at the time but there's a lot better ways we can do that now so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to install redux JS toolkit So there we go. So you can see here in the dependencies, we've got Redux Digest Toolkit, and it's automatically installing Immer and Reselect. Now, if you've ever used Reselect on a React application, especially if you've used it with Immutable.js, Immutable.js plus Redux is, it's not worth it most of the time. 
Um, but Immer is a better way of dealing with immutability. Um, and in fact, in the Redux Toolkit documentation, they say that you should not use uh, mutable.js because it can get very confusing and the um, syntax is non-standard compared to JavaScript objects. Whereas Immer, well, we'll see how that works in a bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and that is we can configure store. Uh, so normally you would create, I'll just close this here. So this is our create store.ts. So normally you would import create store from Redux. And instead what you can do is you can have a configure store that wraps create store to do the same thing, but sets up development tools. So we can easily replace the create store with configure store. So let's go ahead, delete this. Let's go ahead and and let's go ahead import create uh, rather configure store from Redux JS toolkit. Okay. Store equals configure store reducer root reducer export default store okay so what have we got oh we will compiler error so it is still compiling. Let's see if it still works. Yeah, it's, it still seems to be working. So we now have configure store. Oh, here we go. Yes. So we have photos loading, carousel set page. We click this again carousel set page so loading false to true query is kitties total hits 500 and then the hits gives you all the page urls etc 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 so this is now uh built into uh we don't have to add anything to it it's part of the redux toolkit so i'm gonna skip ahead a bit because all this stuff about create action, create reducer, that can be used when you really want to go down into the deep level. But for the most part, what we're going to be using is something called create slice. And what create slice does is it returns a slice object that contains the generator reducers function as a field name reducer and generated action creators inside an object called actions. That is, what it does is it creates our actions for us. And instead of having multiple reducers, all having multiple, um, multiple properties, it will actually create for us, um, the reducers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I want you to take a look at this photos item again. Remember, here we have, for example, this action type stop photos dot load photos. That's going to come up in a number of ways. And this is actually one of the cool things about Redux is that every action goes through every reducer, which means that you can have multiple reducers respond to the same action and you can have the same action trigger in multiple reducers. So, in this case, for our photos, when we ha have load photos, we take the payload and we return the payload. And for our cache, in this case, there's going to be a query property on that payload. And that query is going to be action.payload. And we add that to the state so that that way we don't have to uh, ping the server again if we're using the same query. Uh, and here um, we have... Uh, action type dot photos dot load photos switching our loading boolean from true back to false so we run action types dot photos loading when we're loading the photos 
and then when it's done, it will automatically do, do that fall. So it goes through three separate reducers here. Now, if we change this, we can change this to a simple slice. Um, and here's how we're going to do that. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take this out. We can keep the iPhoto state query in the initialized state. So we will go ahead and do that. But let's uh, try something new. Let's import create slice from React. Redux.js toolkit. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the slice like this. Const photos slice equals create slice. Name photos. Initial state. Analyze state. Reducers. And here, instead of creating all these different switch statements, we're actually going to use uh, something pretty cool here, which is we're going to define our photos reducer as load photos. Now, that may seem more like an action to you, and it is. Um, but this is how the new reducers work. So in this load photos reducer, this flips the action on its head. We're going to pass in a parameter called state and a parameter called action. Now, it's important to understand uh, another thing about uh, React uh, JS Toolkit in that even though this parameter is called state, what we're really doing is creating a draft. And this is the secret behind Immer and why Immer really changes the game when it comes to Redux. Immer, instead of having you run through all the reducers and create a new object, Immer creates a copy, a deep copy of the existing state. That state can be mutated with impunity. So you can change the properties. You can do different things uh, however you want. And what will happen is that your immutable state is referenced to a mutable copy. We mutate the copy as we wish. And then Immer, at the end of the function's execution, will compare the mutable draft to the immutable copy, and then behind the scenes, do all the fancy legwork required to create a new immutable state that only changes what has changed in the draft. So even though, you know, traditionally we will use state here as the variable name, really what you're doing is you're mutating a draft. So instead of having all these different things, photos, photo cache, loading, what we can do is say state dot photos equals action dot payload. And that's it. We don't need to return anything because at the end of it, it's just going to, uh, it, it's actually mutating the draft in place. So state dot uh, photo cache equals state dot photo cache. Actually, we can even do even better. So state dot photo cache action dot payload dot query equals action dot payload. So we don't even have to worry about all this object reassignment, we can just mutate it. Just absolutely mutated the same way that you can mutate anything else. Uh, and then finally, 
uh, because we're loading something. State dot loading. Let's make it is loading equals false. So let me just double check something. I'm thinking that iPhoto state probably isn't the full state here. What we want is instead to initialize the state photos. cache and it is loading false. Uh, we can also have a different item just to have the loading. So set is loading state action or even some even clearer set loading true state state dot is loading equals true okay so now what have we got we've got uh we can get rid of pretty much all of this so that is much much less uh boilerplate there um we can also uh, but how do we actually access it. Well, the way we do that is we will const actions equals photos slice. Let me check if it's actions reducer. Actions, yeah. So we can actually look uh, in our TypeScript uh, file here, what's going on here. So our case reducer actions are load photos and set loading true. And our reducer is photos, photo cache, and is loading with any action. So let's see, so. So there we go. So we now have this created slice. Is this gonna, no, this won't work because the property of the query is undefined because we now have different props. We now have um, cannot read property query of undefined. And for that, we need to go into our actual application to where we are using it. So let's go into, well, first of all, let's go to create store and import photos reducer, photo actions. Well, we don't need to import the action. We just import the photo reducer. So reducers. So that is the root reducer for the photos. Let's also make the same conversion to carousel. So. Oh, that, that's another thing. Now that we have this photos reducer, we can also take our photo actions and make them part of the same file, that is, we can get rid of all these different things. So one of the things we're doing here is we're creating this API uh, object, well, instance of a class. Uh, and that's gonna have our 
API information for grabbing the data. So we'll just move that over here. And I believe that it's, yeah, move that over here. Okay. And we have the set loading, load photos, get photos, yada, yada, yada. So what we have is an asynchronous function that is a func uh, that takes a query and then gets the state and then does all that crazy stuff. So what we actually want to do here is we want to create a, an asynchronous function using the actions we already have. So instead of having this type payload, what we can do is export get photos equals uh, query string. And then dispatch get state we'll format the query that doesn't change oh we can just yeah do that So, I mean, this is all pretty much the same, return dispatch load photos. Only in this case, it will be actions.loadphotos because we are actually getting the action from here. Uh, and then the photo cache formatted query just means reload it. Okay. So what happens if we don't have it in the cache? Well console info no cache hit grabbing from server so there's a um here we go so const so api dot const api equals new api. So we take that instance, i.getImages formatted query. And we can actually, what we can do is we can make this an asynchronous function. Dispatch against it. So now response. Equals AP, await API dot get images. Okay. Const body equals body equals response. And we can dispatch action dot load photos hashed at now query formatted query and the body okay and because this is asynchronous we'll do a try catch change this to set loading state okay. 
also remember if we're running this line then we don't need to even set the action but we will set loading true okay so and then console.error error. So we have this export const get photos. Um, so we're, we can export this a number of different ways. We can add it to our existing actions, but this is now our um, existing, uh, you know, just an asynchronous action. Um, so let's see what broke, because we know something broke because we're changing everything. App reducers, combine reducers, because photos is not defined. Well, it wouldn't be. So we go back into our create store. We get rid of our, we can actually get rid of app producer and root reducer and for that matter, enhancers. Okay. Uh, indeed, get rid of this and get rid of this. So, Before we start messing with the carousel, um, we should also look at Redux Toolkit again because it does have some great stuff called get default middleware, which is basically just default middleware. <laughs> um, so you just import get default middleware from Redux Logger. And in your store, define it as middleware. Get default middleware dot concat logger. I don't even know if I have Redux logger installed, do I? Yes, I do. All right. So carousel is declared but not read. We don't need this now. Look at all this. Look at all this boilerplate just just going away. Just immediately just heading towards the... I don't even think I need Redux Sun because I think that's built in now. So we compile. Uh, it's still broken, sure, but object is not a function. Get default middleware, not concat logger. Hmm. Oh, no, because I'm importing it from the wrong library. There we go. So get default middleware. There we go. Now we still have to convert the carousel. We'll get that in a bit. So what have we got? Not read property length of undefined. But, mm, let's worry about that a little bit later. So let's go into our carousel. Uh, and the carousel can, like our photos, be converted into a slice. And my uh, carousel redux that we, we don't need this. We, in fact, we don't need any of this. import create slice from redux.js toolkit const carousel slice equals create slice name carousel initial state Page zero. So far, so good. So reducers. Let's 
see what we want to do. Set page. State action. It doesn't actually matter if you use the arrow function or not here, uh, but you know. Uh, so page state action. State dot page equals action dot payload. And that is about it. Now, what is, now notice that when we have this action types dot photos load photos, we immediately go back to the first page. And this is another thing that makes Redux useful is that you can have that. So, but in this new system, how do we do that? I mean, we're not going to create another reducer called load photos to just change the number back to zero or whatever. There's a way you can do that. And I'm going to just quickly look that up just to make sure I get it right. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, I seem to have found the answer here. So each slice reducer owns a slice of state. But you can also listen for other types. So extra reducers is how to do that. It allows create slice to respond to other action types besides the types that it's generated. So it can basically, so here we go. Uh, so we have extra reducers. Extra reducers. Producers. I believe it's going to be photos slash load photos. Oh, I figured it out. Okay. So in our photos reducers, we've got this reducer called load photos, where we set our is loading to false, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we also want to reset our page here to, in carousel to zero. In order to do that with load photos, load photos is still going to dispatch an action with an action type. And that action is still going to go through every single one of the reducers. Uh, the name of the action type is going to be this name here, photos, and then the name of the reducer, which will trigger that action type. So it will listen for photos, load photos, and then when it does so, it will set the page to zero using this extra reducers function. So it's not going to create an extra action to handle this. It will just change it based on that particular action type. So there we go. So that that's being done. No. Actions reducer equals carousel slice export default reducer. There we go. And we can go back into our create store, import arrows cell reducer and add cell, cell reducer and that will compile again it's still not going to work because we haven't changed the components yet um, so we have this map state to props that is throwing off an error well, of course it's throwing off an error because we no longer need to map state to props. Now we can do some cool stuff. Uh, so we go to, which file is this? Main carousel.tsx. So let's go ahead and close this and close this and close everything but this. We have our main carousel here with our props. We have this as a class component. So hmm, what do we do? Well, it's very easy. 
we change things up. So const main what? main carousel equals is a uh, it's a React dot fc with no props. And no constructor, and we just return div class name main carousel cell folder. And we don't need any of this or this or this. Export default main carousel. Where is our carousel holder? It's right here. So carousel holder dot index. Where are you? So here's our carousel display area, and we have this carousel holder props. Yeah. So in this case, what we were doing is we were passing this in via this whole. I mean, like, you can see this whole big action dot map state to props and connect and all that. We don't really need to do that anymore. We just have the main carousel. And here's where the magic's going to happen. I'm still going to pass in these carousel holders as props. So. But I'm going to define the props elsewhere. So instead of having connect, bind action creators, and dispatch, get rid of all this. Import use selector, use dispatch from React Redux. So because we're already passing that information, Instead of mapping the state to props, we can do this. Const images, images loaded, current query, is no hits is loading, equals, do, 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 use selector, I believe that's all I need. Images, images loaded, use selector, state, return. There we go. And then instead of props, name should be capitalized there so there we go so don't need map state to props we do need to map dispatch to props however so where is page preview and praise next store actions that carousel so oh yeah uh, we forgot to do for the carousel what we did for photos when it comes to the actions, which is we're creating additional actions. So here's our carousel reducer. Here are our carousel actions. So we have set page, page two, page pre, page next. Um, and so we, we, it's not even a, a big deal. All we have to do is... Well, set page is part of actions. Okay. Export 
page two. Hmm. Where do we actually use page two? We don't actually use page two anywhere, so we can get rid of it. But we do use page prev and page next. So page, oh, we use it here. Okay, so. So. dot set page actions dot set page okay so there we go let's just make this any for right now just to keep it simple and it can be any That's throwing up a and page next okay so we'll go ahead and use the dispatch first let's import page prev and page next From store dot reducers carousel and just add page equals match cost dispatch equals use dispatch Uh, this is something, yeah. And we can also get rid of map dispatch to props now. Now let's hit connect, we just export carousel. Let's see if that did anything. Cannot read property length of undefined. That's fine. State.photos.query, state.photos.hits.length. So 
Let's go ahead and let's ignore this for now. Curious as to what we get when we try to view. So we do have carousel page. So we are getting the state here. We do get state.photos.photos. Okay, so that that's a change. State.photos.photos. Query. And state dot photos that is loading. See what that does. Okay, so not cannot read property page preview of undefined. Actions dot page preview and Uh, in the carousel holder. So And if we search for our kitties, well, we'll break, but we won't break that badly. Okay. So cannot read property kitties of undefined. So if photo cache is formatted query, so formatted photo cache is a good state. So we go to. Photos. Dot photos dot photos. Give it another try. Puppies. Cannot read puppies of undefined. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, because it's still using the old old actions. Ah, I see. So we want to actually now that we have this, get rid of this. Actually, we can go ahead and delete this whole folder. This is in search box. TSX. Page preview page next should not be in store action. They should be in store dot producer. Carousel producers, and again, we'll have to map the dispatch to props. Stead connect dispatch search box. equals props import use state from react const query field set query field equals use state string don't think we actually need props here 
because we're not going to be mapping the dispatch to them. So cause dispatch, let's use dispatch. Hmm. And replace these private methods with consts. Set query field event dot target dot value. And and we'll get props, dispatch, get photos, query field. Get rid of this. Uh, might not need to get rid of that just yet. Get rid of them. Yeah, there we go. So we handle the get photos and we just return this. Turn and all of this export default search box. Okay. Oop. Piling and okay. Reload and photos and carousel. So this is our state. What a cache. Okay. So if this is our state, then we go into Oh, what do you know? It's working again. Now, I'm not sure we'll get previous and next and all that, but yeah. But you can see here how we've eliminated a whole bunch, a whole bunch of boilerplate. We've created a uh, new state that is just easier to reason about. Um, Apologize if this kind of went on too long and I had to do this. I'll do my best to cut out the editing and all that. But you can see, you can see that um, by taking uh, that essentially we've reduced, we've eliminated an entire folder of boilerplate, but eliminated this as boilerplate. So we're just going to go to the quick start here. And it includes APIs for configure store, create reducer, create action, create slice, which we'll get into, uh, and a few others.